the Reverend not joining the family of Michael Brown, but according to Sheriff David Clark, all but assuring uh, the very violence that Brown's mom and dad at least initially urged the community to avoid. So it sounds like what you're saying, Sheriff, is whatever his intentions, he, he, he made things worse. Well, you know, he always does. I mean, anytime Al Sharpton shows up on the scene, uh, nothing's good going to come out of that. You know, I, I, I heard the father uh, the other night call for calm, and you know, I think it was a slap in the face to his family in the memory of Michael Brown that these anarchists, and that's what they are, I'm going to call them for what they are, uh, that they didn't acquiesce to the father's call for calm, and instead they showed their true motivation, which is self-serving. So, you know, I also can't for the life of me figure out, I heard some of the uh, president's comments last night, he said that uh, what we need to do is try to understand them, and he said that the anger was an understandable reaction, and I, I was just floored by that because it's not an understandable reaction. People have to come up with a more socially acceptable way to deal with anger and frustration. This is totally and unequivocally intolerable. Now, um, it's interesting, Sheriff, but uh, prior to the parents meeting with Al Sharpton, you're quite right, they were urging calm, yeah, restraint, right uh, very, very measured in their response. It seemed after their first chat with him, uh, and then when they appeared before reporters, things had changed. What do you make of that? Well, you know, once the decision uh, was rendered, then you know, the, the rioting and the looting started. That's not peaceful protest. It didn't even start off as peaceful, peaceful protest. And once that happens for law enforcement, the National Guard, you know, all bets are off. And, and they have to use all reasonable force to quell the disturbance and to restore order for the law-abiding people, the business owners. And so when I heard the president call for calm after the rioting started, I questioned his sincerity because some of his political strategy of divide and conquer fuels this sort of racial animosity between people. And so I think when he called for calm after the rioting started, I, I believe it was done with a wink and a nod. Do you think that, you know, the governor, as you have heard, uh, Sheriff, has been criticized uh, for calling out the National Guard and then not bringing them in at the earliest sign of trouble, if not have them there at the ready? What do you think of that? It's easy to second-guess the guy now, given what happened, uh, but the lieutenant governor is on him, his, uh, the mayor is on him. What, what should the protocol be for National Guard? If you're going to call them up, have them ready to go right away? Sure, and I think that they should have occupied the streets, the National Guard. Uh, I think Governor Nixon is trying to soft-shoe this thing. I don't think he has the intestinal fortitude to deal with this. What's happening down there right now is real ugly, and the response isn't going to be, uh, you know, pleasing to the eye with what law enforcement and the National Guard have to do. But, Neil, I mean, come on, they have to restore order, and, and the law enforcement officers and the National Guard have to use all reasonable force to get that under control. Restraint is not an option right now for law enforcement. So what do they do? If they up the ante, to your point, Sheriff, the, the critics of that strategy say you make a bad thing worse. You, you, you light up the tinderbox all over again. What do you say? Sure, there's always going to be people on the sideline that are going to second guess you. That's part of what uh, Governor Nixon has to deal with. It's something that I have to deal with when I have to make tough decisions. He has to block that out and do what's in the best interest of Ferguson, Missouri, and the state of uh, the state of Missouri, and he has to get this thing under control and, and not worry about the optics so much. You know, nobody's saying all due force or any force. What I'm calling for is all reasonable force to get this thing under control. And you're going to be criticized. If he's afraid to cr be criticized and he's worried about uh, what people might say in second guessing him, then he's in the wrong position. Then what happens, Sheriff, if Eric Holder announces he's going to pursue a federal probe and a federal grand jury to look into what he would assume, by his math, that a, a local grand jury has failed? Well, as I said uh, previously to you on, uh, on this show, uh, Eric Holder is one of those that was in a, a very visible position to have talked reasonably and to kind of quell this thing early on, and instead he engaged with inflammatory rhetoric. So, you know, for him to come on and, and, and announce what he's going to today, you know, look, justice is about due process. You're not guaranteed a result. You're guaranteed due process. Due process played it out at the state level. If he wants to start a federal probe, he's entitled to do that, but that's just going to prolong this thing. And unless he thinks or he believes that there's something nefarious that went on here with the grand jury uh, uh, investigation, I think you ought to reconsider that. You know, if the family wants to file a civil rights charge, that's fine. 
that's part of the due process. But for Eric Holder to come in, I think it just continues to prolong this thing and, and fan the flames. And let's say he comes out with some indictment of his own and it's thrown out at the federal level because in the end, I don't see a judge in this country upon appeal that would uphold any kind of conviction here against the officer. And then we're, we're going to have to relive this all over again. Um, that officer, uh, Darren Wilson, uh, likely going to retire from the force. Uh, should he fear for his life? I mean, the people would say, just get out of town. Just don't be anywhere near town. Is it that bad? Well, sure. Uh, sure. You know, I, I don't know about getting out of town, but, you know, he should be concerned. The, the uh, police department of Ferguson should be concerned for his safety and take, you know, reasonable steps to ensure that sort of thing. If he is going to resign, I think that's in the best interest. That's probably the smartest move that anybody's made mm. uh, in this whole ordeal. Real quickly then, Sheriff. 98% of blacks surveyed on this apparently thought the decision was unfair. A similar percentage, I think 96% of whites, uh, thought it was fair. So you're dealing with something that is divided sharply on, along racial lines. What do you do? You're a law enforcement authority. You're in the middle of what is a racially charged issue. What do you do? Sure. Well, you know, you have to walk people through this. And I realize that there's, there's, yeah. a, there's a very bright line of division here. But the thing is, like I said, the political strategy used by the left, and we saw it play out in November with this war on women, this uh, fanning racial discord with uh, uh, conservatives and accusation they're trying to take blacks' votes away. That kind of stuff uh, enables this. That kind of stuff encourages this divide. Sure, there's a divide in this country, and there always has been, and sometimes along racial lines. But instead of feeding that beast, what people in, in leadership positions and even political positions ought to do is temper that stuff down and, and, and allow some of this to just, you know, kind of simmer instead of explode all the time. Race is a very explosive and divisive issue in this country, and it's not going to go away. You mentioned that. But we don't have to pick at it, and we don't have to stoke it up all the time. And if it does start to smolder, because this is a lot, has a lot more to do than just what the police use of force, and I don't expect... Uh, police to to make major changes in terms of of uh, how they use force to defend themselves or defend others. I mean, right. we need to review these things, and that's what goes on. But uh, I don't I don't believe that a police officer should put his or her life in danger just okay. to please or 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 to achieve some a political agenda. Well put, uh, Sheriff David Clark, Milwaukee, Milwaukee County. I appreciate it. Uh, Governor.